I call this one, When Will It Slide? And the subtitle is, A Way to Measure Mu S, the coefficient of static friction. So when will it slide is done by its uh, standard mass on an inclined plane problem. So here's your incline at theta, and you put a block on it. And you just ask what's going to happen to the block. We could think of this in a Cartesian system like this, plus y direction, uh, plus x direction. But a lot of times, these incline plane problems are easier if you rotate your coordinate system and talk about a coordinate system where you have a direction sort of parallel to the surface, along the surface, and a direction perpendicular to the surface. So I'm just going to identify those with these two symbols, with the parallel symbol and the perpendicular symbol. And we just got to decide which one we want to use. So right now, uh, when will it slide basically means we're thinking about when will it begin to accelerate down the surface, which means we want to think about what is the acceleration in the parallel direction. So we probably want to work in parallel and perpendicular sort of coordinate system here, rather than x and y. All right. So let's see. Let's draw a free body diagram of the block. It's kind of at an angle like that. And let's see. What do we have here? We've got mg down. Always have mg down. Uh, the normal force is pushing back, but it's always normal to the surface. So normal force isn't up. It's in the perpendicular direction. So you've got a normal force from uh, the, the plane pushing up. And you've also got a friction force. And there's a static friction that's applied to this. It always resists motion. Motion, the, the forces tend to want to pull it this way, so the friction force is that way. Right, so you could draw your free body diagram like that. And you can see some of them are in xy, and some of them are naturally in parallel and perpendicular. OK, so we're going to go with these two. So we write now Newton's second law. Everything we do is by Newton's second law. And let's first do it for the perpendicular direction. The sum of the forces in the perpendicular direction is the mass of the acceleration in the perpendicular direction. We're not writing vectors because these are vector components in one of the two directions. OK, so we're defining up as positive in the perpendicular direction. So the normal force is up in the perpendicular direction, so in. And then the friction force has no component uh, perpendicular. It's all along the surface. So we just need the component of mg in the perpendicular direction. So I can draw it over here and say, oh, there's a component this way, and there's a component that way. And if I draw it like that, we've got to think, oh, where's theta? Theta is here. Because right? if I let this go really small, yeah, that's theta. It takes me a while sometimes. So we have mg here, and sine, so cosine is that component, mg cosine theta. And it's in, which we call negative. So minus mg cosine theta equals, equals 0. It's not moving in the perpendicular plane. right? It's sliding along. It's balanced forces, so equals 0. This is, in fact, how you find the normal force when you're not just sitting on a flat surface. You know, When everything's level, the normal force just equals mg. But when you're tilted, it gets smaller. So in, in this case, the normal force just equals mg cosine theta. So that's what we learned from the perpendicular. But we care more right now about the parallel. Right? So the sum of the forces in the parallel direction equals the mass of the acceleration in the parallel direction. All right, so we defined this as positive parallel. We actually ended up putting the friction force positive. It doesn't matter. F, F. And the negative one is gravity pulling it down, because gravity has a component this way. And down this must be the sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So mg sine theta down the thing, negative minus mg sine theta. So that's the forces that way. And uh, we're asking, when does this become greater than 0? What's it going to take? for that to become greater than 0. That's when we have a problem. Right? All right. So now, uh, the friction force. What is it? It's always mu times the normal force. So the static friction coefficient, mu s, times n. And then the rest we know, minus m 
g sine theta must be what happens when that becomes greater than zero and we get an acceleration. Well, the normal force we got over here. Right? So it's not always just mg straight down. We're on an incline, so the normal force is reduced. So we plug this into here, and we get mu s m g cosine theta minus m g sine theta must be greater than or equal to zero. Or when does that become uh, greater than zero? And since we've got a zero on the right, we can pull out the common terms and then just cancel them because we have zero over here, just as though it were uh, an equal sign. We could make it greater than or equal if that makes you feel better. So we get rid of the m, we can get rid of the g, and we're left with uh, mu s cosine theta must be greater than sine theta. Mu s cosine theta must be greater than or equal to sine theta. That's right when it will happen. As soon as we cross, we become greater than that. There's a nicer way to write that. It's to bring the sine on the other side. Sine over cosine is tangent, right? So as long as the tangent of theta is less than or equal to mu s, it won't slide, right? This is the point where it will begin to slide. So we are saying that we got to keep tangent theta below mu s, and that's the critical point. So what that means is we have a very easy way to measure mu s. All you got to do is get an inclined plane, get a block. In this case, it's just a, a weight. And I will lift this, and we'll watch theta get bigger and bigger. So let's see, about right there. So what is that? About 30 degrees. All right, so the coefficient of friction between this and this is the tangent of about 30 degrees. Let's do it again. We should get the same thing every time, right? If the friction's the same every time, right about there. Let's do it again. Right about there. Every time, because the friction's the same every time. So that's the easiest way to measure mu s. I'm sure we could think of harder ways.